So a big hello to Sean here. Hello. <laughs> hello. Thanks for having me. We're going to talk today a little bit about acupuncture and acupressure for during pregnancy and labour, and even postnatally. Um, so I thought we'd introduce ourselves first so that you know who we are. So Sean, would you like to explain how, how you got to doing this and what you offer people? <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm Sean and I'm an acupuncturist. I trained um, at the College of Integrated Chinese Medicine, which is one of the largest colleges in Europe, and it happens to be in Reading. Um, and I qualified in 2010. And um, so I love acupuncture. I had it mm -hmm. when I, before I became an acupuncturist, and it's a, an amazing medicine. But specifically moving on to how I, it could be used in pregnancy in my... Um, interest in using that um, uh, into in using it to support pregnancy um, it came it was I, I used it um, a little bit before I had my son who's now five but um, definitely have used it more having been through having well having, having a pregnancy and having a child and understanding um, the the real benefits that it can, can bring to supporting pregnancy and to helping women um, in that transition um, into becoming a mother. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah, so, yeah, so that's what I do. <laughs> and that's why, why um, yeah, I guess through, yeah, through growing up a little bit as well and starting a family, that's um, definitely um, harnessed my interest um, especially in pregnancy and supporting women in that way. Great yeah well I, I'm interested because I'm a pregnancy yoga teacher um, and I teach mother and baby yoga as well um, and after a few years of teaching pregnancy yoga I wanted to offer birth preparation workshops and give couples a bit more detail more practical tools that they can use and I don't know how long I've known you now Sean but <laughs> um, I, I, I contacted you I, I remember making contact with you since oh, oh gosh like 2015 maybe yeah yeah maybe or maybe even before <laughs> uh, so I was really interested in you know sort of anything that will help couples um, prepare for the birth while they're in that birthing journey um, so I thought it'd be really interesting to talk to Sean and understand a bit more about um, what's available because I think often when when a woman becomes pregnant it, it sort of opens up a whole new world and there's sort of so many different things um, that she might try or um, yeah I don't know I think you get so many leaflets when you're pregnant of all these different things that you might do and how, how do you how do you choose what will help you? How, how, you know, when you've got limited amount of money that you want to put somewhere and there's the expense of things that you might need for the baby, you want to be really sure that um, you're choosing the right things through, the, through that journey. So I'm really interested to find out a little bit more. So I don't know if you, if you want to start with just explaining why do people come to you during pregnancy for acupuncture? Yeah. Um, well, so just first of all, in Chinese medicine, we view pregnancy as a really, really opportunistic um, a, a time, a period in a woman's life where you can massively change their health it, for the better. Um, so it's a, if you can able to support a woman and they're able to have a better pregnancy and then postnatally afterwards and support them there, then you can have huge impacts on, on their health. It's, it's seen as a really... Um, precious time uh, in order to, for your future health. Mm -hmm. um, but the way that acupuncture can help during pregnancy or, or what I see in my clinic, so it's from the beginning really. So mm -hmm. sometimes I have the fortune of being able to help people fall pregnant um, with acupuncture, making sure you know that their, their cycle is as is, is, good as it can be additionally helping their partners if there's problems with fertility mm. so sometimes I, I have the great fortune to be involved in that process um, as an acupuncturist of making sure that their bodies are working the best that they can mm. um, uh, I see women who um, in early pregnancy so you can support with um, in morning sickness which can is a, be very grueling and very um, uh, a difficult time 
um, and it, acupuncture can help with nausea. Mm. Um, and, and there's just a huge amount of changes that happen during pregnancy. So on a month to month, um, month to month, things are changing in terms of the development of the baby growing and also the demands on, on the mother's body mm. and supporting um, through that. Not only can you help women that maybe had problems before, becoming pregnant and then they can't necessarily take the medications that they would have relied on before and they look for external or uh, a different um, way in to support them with migraines or, or things like that. Mm -hmm. they, they might not want to take um, uh, medication mm -hmm. so you can support in that way as well. Also um, I think in this, this initial first 12 weeks particularly um, you can help a lot with um, supporting women that have um, had previous miscarriage as well and helping them support through that 12 weeks because it can be an incredibly difficult time. Yeah. You don't want people to know necessarily um, that you're pregnant and um, having an additional support and help, helping your body with um, acupuncture can be really, really um, a great uh, resource and support. Yeah. And then moving forward, um, you know, uh, later, um, of course, you're looking at things like pelvic pain, um, back pain, in, uh, injuries that you may have had before, and it's just that additional stress through the body um, uh, that, as you become larger, just puts a bit of extra force through those joints. Um, <laughs> I mean, it just goes on. So yeah, around, yeah, yeah the position yeah. of the baby, you can help with turning. Mm -hmm. And then as you move towards labour, I'll, I'll let you say something now because I just go on and on. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that I, I guess you, sometimes you get people very late on because maybe um, they've gone overdue or maybe the baby's in an awkward position. Like you said, perhaps they're breech or transverse. So can you say a little bit about how, how possibly can the sort of acupuncture help that baby turn? It's really fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but it's really nice to be able to talk about it now so people have um, information prior or before they get to this emergency situation and they phone up which is generally happens um, but yeah acupuncture more moxibustion so moxibustion is um, a herb that is burnt can help with turning uh, breech babies um, or but yeah babies that are head down um, depending of course on the situation so if it's multiple pregnancy um, then then it's you can't use it then but with with breach then you can and actually it's quite uninvasive so it forms no needles um, although if you go to an acupuncturist they may add some extra points in um, just to try and make the treatment a little more um, effective and um, yeah, considering the woman's health overall. But essentially the, the treatment is warming a little point on the end of your little toe. So if you imagine that's my foot, it's weird toes, but just here, there's a point on the end of the little toe. And there's been research that showed it to be effective. It's just simply warming it. So you hold something that looks a bit like a cigar. It has a, a herb in which is uh, called mugwort, or um, we call it moxa and you burn it and you warm this little point on both feet and you do it for a period of 10 days and um, babies will turn but it's most effective and this is something yeah. to be key to remember to in case it happens to you or a friend um, around 32 to 34 weeks okay so that might be earlier than people think because I think yeah. often they, people only really get concerned right at the end when they're having one of the later midwife appointments and then as you say it's this big emergency so so of course you can use it later and it can be effective but it's the most effective mm. a little bit earlier on when there's a little bit more space um, uh, for movement so yeah so that's how you use moxa then for 10 babies um, it's yeah it's bizarre I, I, they, we talk about different channels and how they work um, and it's, it's a very uninvasive treatment in the sense that it just starts, move, um, it increases fetal movement. Um, so you're in, we, we, we refer to inviting the baby to move. There's nothing physical about it. If there's a, you know, a restriction in, in the sense that perhaps the umbilical cord's too short and there just isn't that movement, you can't force mm. that 
force that movement. So we call it inviting the baby. I think that's a little bit similar to, you know, if you went to see a chiropractor or try some of the sort of yoga positions that are meant to help a baby turn. You, I, I really like that phrase, inviting the baby to turn, because I, mm. I've had sort of clients in my classes over the years who've gone for the cephalic version where they're, for those of you who haven't heard about it, they're sort of holding the, the baby's bottom, the baby's head through the mummy's tummy and then sort of physically turning the baby around. And that is very invasive. And, you know, you sort of have to sign a waiver in case you have, it triggers labour and you have to go for cesarean. And so that's a big deal. Whereas I, I love the idea of trying these non-invasive things first. Oh. Absolutely, and actually um, this more manual um, turning can be more effective if you've had moxibustion beforehand as well, so it can be yeah. worth, yeah. definitely worth using it beforehand. And, but of course, you know, it's done by you know, professionals who know what they're doing in a safe environment um, if, it, if it does come to that point, so it's, um, you know, it's up to you. But yeah, I mean, there's other things that you can do in advance to try and mm. encourage, encourage that turn. Mm. And then we were talking about induction as well. If sort of somebody's gone overdue, and um, how how might acupuncture help in that situation? Yeah, so often, often this is the majority of people, ladies that I meet, because oh, really? quite, <laughs> quite well known for um, uh, for for inducing labour. Um, and you'll have a phone call with someone who's very. Um, anxious about the potential of a medical induction and would like to go into labor beforehand um, and yeah you can you can use points to encourage um, contractions to start so with like with any intervention um, you want to leave it until the last possible moment um, <laughs> so you know you're not going to have um, you know phone up an acupuncturist because you know, you'd like to have your baby on this date, and oh, can we can we get it going? It, it, it just doesn't work. And generally speaking, anyway, babies have their own time yeah. agenda, and they they come when they want to. I often say to women that phoning me is enough because often they don't <laughs> actually arrive in the living room. Um, but there are points that uh, you can use to stimulate contractions. Um, you use um, so you use. Um, a needle to stimulate um, these points, there's some on your feet, there's some on your hands, there's some on your lower back. You might even um, use a slight electroacupuncture as well, which is where, so instead of manually manipulating the needle, um, you just run a, a light electrical charge. It sounds a bit funny, it's not <laughs> like plugging into the mains, it's, it's a battery, it's um, a very mild but, um, electrical charge just to stimulate those points a bit more. And yeah, they, it can be effective in, in starting labour. Yeah. But what I've definitely found in the last few years of my practice is that uh, something which we call um, uh, labour preparation means that I see less of these cases where you're, you know, you're 41 plus 5 plus 6 or about, you know, you've been booked in um, because you've gone into labour naturally um, before that point. And this is treatment that starts from around 36 weeks and is weekly until you give birth. And it helps with ripening the cervix, so getting everything nice and ready and just um, trying to relax the ligaments in the hips and open and loosen everything up. Oh, I'm sorry about this, I've got some building work going. Um, <laughs> really. And um, so it starts to relax everything. And of course, in addition to that, you treat somebody holistically. So you understand, you know, what their sleep's like, um, what stresses and strains they're having in their body, and you, you treat those as well to ensure that, they, that things are moving nicely in terms of getting ready for labor and also that you know that they're resting well so they have enough energy for it and um and and treating them you know for having headaches trying to just ease ease all of these additional things that you don't really need in that lead up to um in that lead up to labor just to support support it and there's a small research um study um, by, run by midwives in, a, uh, in New Zealand who are actually doing that for themselves and 
it was small, but the, the research was um, significant and it showed that women that were having this free labour treatment would have uh, reduced labour times and reduced um, intervention. So, and I see it in my, in, in my clinic as well, women that I treat with this, there's, there's more often than not, you know, they don't get to this, this panic stage because everything's just moved the way that it should, should have done. Mm. I think what you said about rest is so important because I think often, you know, people are sort of finishing work and they feel like there's so much to be done before the baby arrives. And it's, it's quite easy to sort of be on the go, you know, sort of feel like, oh, I'm nesting. And, but actually, even if it's that they're coming once a week for an hour with you and having that treatment and that time for somebody to listen to them, that is that's so important yeah it, it really is it's a really uh, you can imagine if it's you know not your first and you have small children at home as well actually to have that i mean whether it's acupuncture or whether you find some other way to have to give yourself respite yeah um, maybe reflexology um, or yeah or yoga <laughs> <laughs> or, or locking the door and having your breath. <laughs> <laughs> um I yeah no, it's really, yeah it's really important it's it's like training for a marathon and you need to have that energy you need to have that conserved energy to be able to yeah to to go through labor Um, yeah and I I really think with acupuncture or the yoga you're trying to make your your body as well as possible and, and like you say sort of prime yourself because I think for most women it will be the most physical thing that they they ever do um and that that can't be really understated i think if if you have an athlete that's preparing for a big race a marathon or whatever it might be there's so much sort of preparation that goes into that not only physically but psychologically um so yeah i've I've, i sometimes feel like people put a lot more sort of work into maybe passing their driving test or something than they might in because it's almost that sort of the work of labour is is somehow hidden in our society. I don't know. Um, you hear stories of, of challenging births, but um, yeah, to say well, it, it it's it is a, a very physical thing, but it can be in, incredibly empowering if you prepared for it. Um, oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the um, the act of pressure points because that's something that people can do for themselves so Absolutely. do you want to sort of introduce how, how yeah. that might work so i um, mean so of course acupuncture has needles so <laughs> i won't go too much into it. they're absolutely fine i have people fall asleep on my couch <laughs> but it's, it's not an issue at all but if you remove the needles and you replace it with a thumb then you can actually start applying um, pressure to some of these acupuncture points um, yourself and um, they incredibly effective as pain relief during um, mm-hmm. labor so there you, it's possible to start using these points from 36 weeks mm-hmm. or that well finding them from 36 weeks and maybe applying a little bit more pressure from 37 um, mm-hmm. when, when you know you're at term mm-hmm. Um, but beforehand they can, you know, they used to start contraction, so, so don't, <laughs> but, but there, um, yeah, so there's a series of, um, these points on the body and they can help with what I, what I described with the labor preparation. Mm-hmm. So with the labor preparation, I'd use acupuncture and then I would send the lady home and I would say this point and this point, you can find it every day and apply pressure, a firm constant pressure for a minute um, every day, then you know, you're just enhancing that treatment. When it comes to labor, then you can actually start to apply a really, really firm and constant pressure on some of these points. And the way that I describe it is that a contraction has a beginning, a middle and an end. It's not it's not a constant, a con- uh, the intensity of a contraction. It comes like this. And when you apply pressure to an acupressure point that works for you, then what will happen is you'll, you won't reach here, you come to about here. Okay. So you feel the contraction, of course you do, but it's more manageable. 
it's um it's it's easier your body is more rela relaxes more into it mm. um so it can be incredibly effective um and i assume either you you or your partner could be applying that pressure absolutely so the key thing with acupressure is that it starts um early in in labor so you can't arrive uh seven centimeters eight centimeters oh should we look at those five <laughs> Because it won't work. It's a cumulative. You need to start so it's, early. it's a bit like using a tens machine. You have to put it on early. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So um, you start early, and there are points that you can do yourself. So that's great. So there's points on the hands. There's some on the shoulders that you can reach. Um, there's points on the feet which you may be able to reach, <laughs> depending <laughs> depending on your size and flexibility at that point. Um, uh, yeah, so there are points that you can reach yourself. I think probably the ones on the hands are the easiest. So I will, I'll describe this point, but I'll just say, you know, not before 37 weeks. Mm. Um, so this point on the hand is great for early labour. Yeah. The bones, oh, I've got to make sure that my hand's in shot. <laughs> These sort of bones come here and they form a V shape. And then you've got this nice squidgy bit of muscle. In and does it matter which hand? No, you use one and then when that starts to hurt a bit more, then you use the other. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, right, so you roll off the bone and into the, that squiddy mass of muscle and you'll find an area which is achy. So there won't be a question in your mind of, oh, am I on the point, am I not? If you go into it and you work around, you'll find an area which provides a dull, uh, you know, an ache. Yeah, I can feel it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at that point, then you apply a firm and constant pressure, and you'd hold it for the duration of the contraction, or, or whatever works for you. I know, I know women that have actually just used it in between contractions because they didn't want their partner to touch them, and they managed beautifully through their labour and found it really helpful. But uh, but it's 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 for uh, pain management. So you'd use it for. For, while you're having the contraction, generally speaking. And um, you, you press and you hold firmly. So it's not a massage, it's mm. constant firm pressure. And what you'll find is when you're, when you're in labor, you might find it now and you're like, oh, that's a, a bit sore, it's a bit, a bit nice. But when you're actually having in labor and you're having a contraction, you will really enjoy the firm, mm. firm and very heavy pressure on it. Um, because you'll feel immediately, just not like this, it just to here. So is this, um, is this a meridian that then travels down to the pelvis or the uterus? What's, is there this a one isn't, no, this, this one I think it, well, this one travels up, it ends, it ends up by your nose actually. Mm. Um, but it's, um, it's a well-known point for pain. Mm. So there's, this, this is an incredibly good point for pain management. So it's really good for headaches, um, mm. and anything in the face, because um, uh, that's where the channel ends. But yeah. it's very good for, for pain. But there are points that are on um, channels that run up into the uterus that are particularly good at regulating contractions mm. um, and points that run up through the sacrum as well. Through, through that area, which are good for back pain. So, mm. yeah, so there's a combination, there's a, a few different ones, and they're not, while some of them are, you could say specifically for pain, some of them run directly through the uterus, some of them um, are also good at managing how you're feeling as well, if you're anxious, and helping you relax a bit more and stay calm and in control. Um, so you have a, a nice wide, selection of points and not only do they all sort of help with that reduction in the intensity of the contraction but then they'll have additional um let's say uh uh special qualities like so for example there's a point on your shoulders which is really easy to find because it's like when someone gives you a shoulder massage you just get to that point and it's like oh yes that that's the point yeah just that. yeah you hit the spot <laughs> yeah exactly you hit the spot and this is this is the thing with acupressure it's not it's not abstract it's about finding something that you go oh yeah that helps not like oh i think that we're in the right place here but mm -hmm. if it's not working it's not working you need to get onto a point and you'd be like yes that's really 
mm. make any difference. So for example, this one on the shoulders, um, again, not to be used before 37 weeks, has a really strong descending action. Oh, okay. so, you might, so you might consider it with the third stage of labor, with delivering the placenta, or during the pushing phase, um, you could, you could, this could be a great point then. Some women use it from the beginning because they just love it and it's just the right point for them. Mm. They're at around eight points and you might only use two. Yeah. You, know, you try one, oh, that's not working. You've got seven more to, to mm. go through. So how, um, how do women learn about these points? Where can they find out more information? So everything basically is available. There's a, an amazing app. Um, by a lady called Deborah Betts, who's put together these points. Um, and I will send over a link and we'll put it in the bottom of the video and you can go and you can have a look and you can have a look and you can, you're more than welcome to contact me. I teach people how to do it. So if going through a load of text and wondering whether you're in the right place, then I'm very happy to go through to, to teach and to go through it. But yeah, all the information's out there. So um, so you could come with the birth partner so he or she can kind of understand where those points are as well. Mm. Absolutely. It's really, really important actually that, um, so with women that I treat in pregnancy, I generally, I invite them, you know, come with your partner and we'll go through these points and get mm. them to do it as well. Because there's points that you can't really do yourself. So on the lower back, where you might put a TENS machine and you can apply pressure on these points. So if you're somebody that wants to get into water, you can't use your tense machine anymore, you can apply pressure on, the, on these specific points. So it's really important for them and it empowers them because they have not only a supporting role, but then they have a really, really important job to do. I have a, one lady who said, um, I said, we were using some lower back points um, and uh, my partner needed to go and get the car to, to take us to the hospital, but I wouldn't let him move because, <laughs> <laughs> because what he was doing was, it was, you know, I couldn't cope without him. And um, so you can use these points. Oh, sorry, I just slightly lost where I was going. Oh no, so it's really important. And I'd additionally say that the, you know, in a combination with these points, reducing this intensity, you've got somebody with you skin on skin, mm. make, you know, increasing oxytocin, being, you know, having a really, not wondering what they should do, um, mm. having a really important role that keeps everything calm. And so all of these elements of the fact that, you know, they're doing something, skin on skin, yeah. working, just adds to the whole experience. And of course, you know, what it, it's not necessarily just using acupressure for your labour. Mm. Your labour will be however it is. You may have done other things to help um, inform you and using other techniques, but it goes really well with all of these other mm -hmm. techniques. You like hypnobirthing or, yeah. Yeah, hypnobirthing, going to antenatal classes and informing yourself about what choices you have and what to expect. Um, and it's, so it's like having a toolkit, and this is just one little thing that you've got in there that can, the whole little package is gonna help you, um, help you through, through that. Yeah, it's just an additional strategy. Um, and it's really useful, I, I used it in my labor. I taught people before my labor, and I was like, okay, I'm in labor now, I'll try it. <laughs> and I, I need to, I mean, I teach people, so I, I, I've got to experiment. So I, I, I said, okay, now without, now without. And I was like, after two further contractions, like, no more, <laughs> back on, because there was no point. It just re it really, it just took the, this mm. top note, the edge of them. Mm. And um, I mean, yeah, I've, I've, I've had the privilege of attending early stages of my, of a friend's labor. And I was again on her hands and you just saw her whole face relax. Oh, lovely. It was, you know, so you, you, it was, it, it's really wonderful wonderful thing to be able to do for someone and to yeah. do it sounds a little bit like I, when I've sometimes heard people talk about getting into the pool if they're using a, a pool during the birth and just that feeling of getting in the warm water and then their whole body's relaxed and suddenly it feels a bit easier it sounds a little bit similar to that just having that taking the edge off it yeah yeah I, th I think all, all of the tools essentially is the more that you can relax your body and allow it to do what it's designed to do and not 
fight it, not to go with it, the easier it will be or the, well, it, it's difficult, but you know, it's um, anything that, you, the, the more in control you'll feel. I think that's yeah. what that might be, the more in control. Yeah, I mean, over the years, what I've been thinking is that um, all, of, all of these kinds of techniques help you create a, a space where you're feeling as comfortable as you possibly can and you're feeling cared for, like you were talking about the touch and helping get the oxytocin going so that you can have that, that biggest letting go, <laughs> you know, you've been carrying this baby for nine months or so and there has to be that moment when, when you do let go and, but you have to feel safe enough to do that, to go into that place of vulnerability um, and that's that's hard if you're in a more sort of clinical setting and and you don't have these tools or you're not sure about the process of birth because you sort of been thinking well it'll be all right on the night the midwife will tell me what to do but the more you can engage with it and sort of understand it and and have a partner who has these tips at their their fingertips um, it means you can relax for that that real moment of release um, yeah yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a really difficult one because, of course, as individuals, we're all really different as well. And mm. some, you know, some of some of us can just go into whatever environment that you go into and just feel mm. confident and 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 do things. And some of us, you know, we're more anxious. Um, so it's you know, it's anything that you can do to make yourself feel better. And whatever that is, you know, you just have to, you just have to look after yourself, know yourself and know what you need. And I think that there's so many things out there that can just help you to do that and to support you. Um, you just have to find, you have to find your, in a way you have to find your own way. You have to yeah. carve your own way. There's, there's, I mean, it's, it's lovely that there's so many things out there that are just, mm purely there to just try and help you and support you um, yeah. Yeah. yeah well for example my my sister's just had a baby and um she was planning a home birth and she'd hired a pool and she was so excited she'd had a test run and a little bit of a, a sort of lie in the pool before going into labor but actually during the birthing journey she got in and it just she just wasn't working for her she preferred to be out with the tens machine so um it's nice to have options because until you've been on that first labour, you, you don't know quite what will work. So if you've got a number of things up your sleeve, <laughs> you can go, well, no, yeah. this, this isn't really hitting the spot. Let me try the other thing. And, and again, that can just give you this feeling of confidence that there are, there are more things that are going to make you feel as comfortable as, as you can be. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you one more thing, which is before we started recording, you were saying about... Um, postnatally as well that there are points that you can use and that was really oh, intriguing yeah 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 so I mean, it was um so for example this point on the shoulder it has this descending point it can help with um the letdown of milk mm -hmm. so again if you imagine you've had your baby and you're nursing them and so oxytocin is uh, the hormone that helps the uterus to contract and it also helps this letdown of milk um, it's this sort of pumping action it's an amazing amazing hormone and if you imagine that you have your partner on these points and you're breastfeeding more oxytocin a point that's um, special magical power not magical power <laughs> but it, it, it's tool it, it's purpose it's this strong descending action Mm. through um and and nursing so it could be it's another it's you can use it mm. um to help with that it's a lovely point mm. um other points that you could use oh i mean you, know, you could use all of them probably postnatally um uh, it's definitely second time round uh, the after pains um of the uterus sort of coming coming back to its sort of normal size were much more intense with with after my second baby was born so i can imagine using that one there you know absolutely yeah absolutely yeah yeah definitely use, use them yeah use them. Oh, it's been fascinating. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're very welcome. I hope that it was clear. And I'm always 
um, if anyone has any questions, um, you know, you can always email me or, or call. I'm always happy to talk about this oh, stuff, but especially the acupressure because it's just so easy. I really look forward to a time in the future that women will get together and they'll be like, oh, I use this point, you should try it. <laughs> and, and all like mothers say to their daughters, this is the one that was great in your labor, why don't you try that? And there won't be any of this, you know, having to learn it all. It'll just be like- It'll be passed down, oh, yeah. These ones, yeah. Well, like, what for you? I, I think that that would be wonderful. Um, yeah, and also if more midwives were able to, um, to use those points as well, that would, that would be great, yeah. Yeah, oh, it's happening slowly. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> oh, well, it's been lovely talking to you. Me um, too. I'll wave goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. See you. <laughs>